April. I'm new to booktube. I've been wanting to start a booktube channel for ages. I've just never had the courage to start and do it. So March is my month. So I decided I am going to start with a March wrap up and kind of go from there. So I'm going to go over the eight books I read this month. This stack being some of them and some of them I borrowed and read on Kindle. Um, so yeah, let's chat through my March reads and my readings and thoughts. So the first book was Changing All Stars. So I'm a little bit late to this one. I think a lot of people read this last year or maybe the year before. Um, no, last year it came out. And it's been on my TBR for ages. I just hadn't got around to it. I was a little disappointed. I think I had such high expectations for it um, going in. And not to say that I didn't like it, but I think there was way too many points of views it was really hard for me to keep track of um, a lot of the characters especially the minor characters that I feel like didn't really add much or or maybe weren't necessary and there wasn't as much fighting as I thought it would be so this book is kind of sold as a Hunger Games commentary on the prison system in America uh, in like a Hunger Games arena style when you think of Hunger Games you think of all the fighting right all the battles uh, this didn't have a ton of that. I mean, there were definitely scenes like the beginning of the book opens with it, which is really promising. But then throughout, you realize it's more of character development and a lot of telling you about past battles, but not actually showing you. And that was something I was really looking forward to in this in, in this book. So I think I landed at a three star for this book. I definitely loved the commentary that it did on the prison system. I actually learned a lot. They, um, the author incorporated a lot of these really cool little footnotes at the bottom that kind of went over or related to parts of the story. And there was a lot of little facts. And I believe all of the footnotes for the most part, if they were rooted in history were true. And so there was a lot of really cool facts and never heard about before so that was really cool um there were definitely some characters that i really liked in this but it just didn't meet my expectations which doesn't mean it's a bad book the, that just is a reflection of my rating so yeah changing all stars was the first book i finished the second book i finished this month was the second book in the shepherd king duology so two twisted crowns i read one dark window in february enjoyed it i really liked the premise of this story i liked the magic system even though i didn't 100 percent understand it at some points i was really excited uh for this second book a pretty common critique of this book is that they did introduce two new points of views that didn't exist in the first one and they took up the majority of this book or at least 50% of this book and unless you were like super into those new point of views you probably didn't love it um, and that was kind of the group that I fell into. I really liked the obviously the main characters in the first one and their different points of views and then I feel like they kind of got lost in this second one. Not to say that the new point of views were not great, it just wasn't what I was as excited to read about. From the point of view, mainly Elspeth, who's the main character, her whole point of view, not to give any super spoilers or anything, but her whole point of view is kind of passive, and I'll just say that. If you really love her point of view and um, the main character, it kind of gets lost a little bit in this second book. So the first book I gave a four star. I think this second book I'm landing at a three, maybe a three and a half. But for now it's a three. I did like how it wrapped up. It did drag. The pacing was a little off at some points. But overall, I think it was a really, a really cool story. Really unique. And I liked following all the magic and everything. So I will give this one a three star. The third book I read this month, well actually it's a graphic novel, um, Almost American Girl. So I've been trying to read more graphic no novels slash manga this year just to kind of broaden my reading. I can go to my, obviously anybody, can go to their local library and pick these up because although I did read this on Kindle, I did end up going and borrowing it, borrowing it at the library afterwards so that I can kind of flip through the art because you just don't get all of the beautiful art that's in here through a kindle a black and white kindle this is about a girl teenage girl who is pulled from south korea where she grew up and brought to basically middle of nowhere america it's her kind of assimilating and trying to deal with the culture shock trying to deal in a 
in an age of America where there maybe wasn't as much diversity, especially in these small towns in the middle of America. And this is a memoir. So Robin Haw, who is the author about her kind of coming to the US and trying to find her place in the world and how she used being an artist herself and how she used that to kind of find her way. I thought it was a super sweet story. My mom actually immigrated from Korea in her teens. So I was really interested in reading a similar story. My mom also was one of, I think, maybe two or three um, Asians in her high school, and that's very similar to this story. Really sweet story. I really enjoyed this one. The art is super cute. It doesn't take too long to get through, but it's also not super short. Sometimes with like the graphic novels I've noticed like, that I've been reading more and more, they're either too short for my liking or too long. This one I ended up giving a four star, and I think that's a pretty fair rating. I would definitely read more from this author, and I think she does have a couple other graphic novels. So um, yeah, so that was my graphic novel of the month. I'm trying to do like a graphic novel a month. The next book I read was Heart of the Sun Warrior. So this is the second book in the Celestial Kingdom duology, this being the first one, Daughter of the Moon Goddess. I think I read Daughter of the Moon Goddess in 2021, maybe 2022. So it had been a while once I finished this. And of course, you know, once I finished this, I bought this immediately. And then, of course, I didn't read it. Um, and so I was like, I need to start this one, get through it and finish this duology and finish these characters. This one was interesting. So... Yeah, I mean, I didn't have a lot of notes for this one. So basically, the letter is a love triangle. It wasn't super memorable. Um, the ending is kind of interesting how it plays out. I did think it was a good conclusion, and I really did enjoy reading it. I do think this author, Su Lin Tan's writing, is really flowery and beautiful. Sometimes it got a little dense where I was just trying to get through it. She writes really well, and I would read more from her. So um, Heart of the Sun Warrior... I believe I believe I gave it four stars and I think I gave the first one four stars too so although I don't have a ton of commentary I really enjoyed it I thought they were well written and I did really like the pacing and all the different battles that happened and I'm glad I finished the duology the next book I read was an arc uh, it was called Mina's Matchbox. Um, she's the same author that wrote Memory Police, Housekeeper's Professor, um, I think she's wrote a couple other novels. I really loved The Memory Police. That's actually one of my five star reads, but Mina's Matchbox. So this one comes out, I believe, hmm, I think in May, but I'll, I'll put the date on the screen. And if you like kind of shorter, quick reads, it's definitely a shorter one. It's about a girl who goes to live with her uncle's family for a year. Um, and it's very different from her upbringing and how she was raised and, and her childhood and becomes best friends with her cousin Mina. Um, and Mina has this affinity for collecting matchboxes and writing stories about the matchboxes. So that's kind of where the title comes from. It was a very slice of life book. If you like books that are not a lot of plot, a lot of maybe anecdotes and vibes, this might be your, your book. But it wasn't something that kept me wanting to go back to it. I really flew through the end of it because I was just trying to finish it not because I really cared where it was going because it wasn't really going anywhere with um with no plot Damn! but I do think it was a sweet tale I think you could really like some of the characters in it I also just wasn't in the mood for this type of story so overall I think it could work for a lot of people but it just wasn't my style so I ended up giving it three stars the next book that I read was Lie With Me by Felipe Besson. This was a book I just picked up on a whim. So I was just perusing through Barnes and Noble. And you know, usually you go into bookstores now with an idea of exactly what you're gonna pick up, what you wanna read, what's popular. It's kind of not as common to just wander. And I know when I was reading before Book Two and Book Talk were super popular, I used to just meander through the bookstores and kind of pick out a book and if it sounded interesting I would take it home and I would give it a try. I wouldn't look up the Goodreads rating, I would just take it and you know now nowadays with every book I pick off the shelf I have to look at the Goodreads rating because I, there's so many books I want to read I don't want to waste it on a book that has maybe a two star average rating so or really to be honest anything under a four star rating on Goodreads I think second about 
which is really sad because there's some of my most favorite books are rated below four stars on Goodreads. So anyways, this was one of those books that I just picked up. I read the synopsis and it had a lot of comparisons to Call Me By Your Name and um, the author of Call Me By Your Name actually did the blurb on the front. And so that's a book that I really, I really like and the movie I really loved. And so I decided to give this one a chance, especially since it's so short. I think it's 150 pages. This one ended up being a five star read. I loved it. The, the quotes and the writing is so beautiful. It's simple and kind of understated, but really hit, like has an impact. And um, the story and these two characters and kind of how they evolved and the different places these two characters are coming from and how they connect and how they disconnect is just, it's so beautiful but also sad. And I don't know, this one just really hit me. There's so many quotes in here. Um, there's so many like beautiful lines and I would definitely recommend picking this one up. If you like Call Me By Your Name, you like you know, beautiful prose. This is the one, especially being a translated work, I feel like it's really hard to maintain sometimes that beautiful flowery language um, and translate it to, you know, a completely different language. So that was really preserved in this one and it makes this one one of my new favorites. So I definitely recommend Lie With Me. The next book I read was Air of Fire. So I'm new to the Sarah J Maas um, universe. I haven't read any of her other books or her other series. I decided that since I wasn't probably going to read all of her series and commit myself to that, I just wanted to read this series that I thought would be something that I'd be most interested in. And from a lot of things that I read online and from my friend who's actually read all three of them, I decided that Throne of Glass was going to be the one that I was going to read. If there was going to be any series that I would just pick up and read from her, it was going to be Throne of Glass. So I've made my goal to read one book from the Throne of Glass series a month at least. I have a really hard time with long series, especially fantasy, to read back to back to back. And that's probably a me problem. But I decided that if I could read one book a month, then I could stay on tra track and make sure I finish it this year. March, the book for me to read next in the series where I was at was Air of Fire. This is a beefy book and they only get beefier as we go on. So it's a little intimidating. I believe I gave this one a four star. I definitely am enjoying this series more and more as it goes on. The first two books, I was a little like you know, but everybody told me that it does pick up and I just have to kind of com commit myself and keep going. So it has been getting better. There's a new point of view that's brought into this book um, for the witches. Now, I was not really a fan. Uh, I felt myself kind of pushing through those chapters and not really caring or trying to understand that character's point of view and the new characters that were introduced. My friend that has read the whole series does say that that point of view does pick up and become more interesting. So I did have that in mind when I was reading it, even though I thought it, they kind of dragged on and, and kind of broke up the pace of the book. And I will say near the end that Manon, the witch's point of view did get more interesting. I did, I was more invested in it, but overall I kind of felt like those were the chapters I was kind of hurrying through. And then I will say probably 100 pages of this how many pages are in here almost 570 pages 100 of them probably could have been chopped out um t in in my personal opinion that's my opinion i just felt like there was a lot of filler there was a lot of her um trying to learn how to harness her abilities and her power and for me that was just it, there was too much of it i did like the new character rowan i'm trying not to say too much because you know if you haven't read the book leading up to this or this book, um, then I don't want to spoil anything. So I gave this one four stars. And then the last book I read was The Rachel Incident. So I borrowed this one from the library, I read it on my Kindle. I'm actually planning on buying a copy of it when it's released in paperback later this year. I loved The Rachel Incident. I kind of went in thinking I had an idea of what the what the story was about. But then as I read, I realized I didn't really know what it was about. Um, and which was a good thing because I think a lot of the the things surprised me. A lot of the plot points surprised me. It's just these this 20 some year old girl 
trying to kind of find herself, find her place in the world and figure out what her direction in life is. You know, the economy is dipping. There's not a lot of opportunity for her. Uh, and she's also dealing with a lot of personal drama. And I'll kind of leave it at that. It did kind of remind me of normal people, the, the vibes and the way that it was written and um, the banter. It felt really genuine authentic where a lot of times i read dialogue in books and i'm like people don't talk like that people don't say those things and i feel like the dialogue in this book really added to the characterization of the characters and made me feel like the characters were three-dimensional and were maybe similar to people that i knew in real life so um, i really enjoyed the rachel incident uh, i rated that one five star and i think that's gonna be a new one that i kind of recommend to friends i've already recommended it to one of my friends and i definitely want to read more from that author because i think she she writes simply and easy to understand but and the, her pacing is amazing but she also writes her characters really well and that's something that i really enjoy in books so five stars so these are most of the books I read in March. I had a really good reading month. I got two five stars, which to me, that's amazing. Sometimes I go months without a five star, especially last year. There were so many months that went without a five star. So to get two five stars in one month is really good for me. I have some new favorites and some new ones that I'll talk about. So thanks so much for watching. I hope to be doing more videos on my channel, kind of sharing my thoughts and kind of being part of this, this book community that I love so much. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video.